Hi everyone, welcome to the Lifestyle is Medicine podcast. This is Daniel Cho, the Managing Director of Pathways to Wholeness Lifestyle Medicine, and I'm here with Dr. George Cho, our Medical Director. Hello everyone. We're coming to you again from our North York Lifestyle Medicine Clinic, and in this episode, we're starting a series on obesity and weight loss. And so in this episode, we're going to talk about why obesity and excess weight is an issue, and specifically talk about uh, weight yo-yoing, how people go on diets and then uh, tend to, they lose weight, but then tend to regain it. So we're going to talk about why that happens. And in future episodes, we're going to talk about a lifestyle medicine approach to managing weight. So for starters, uh, Dr. Cho, why is excess weight an issue? Yes, uh, excess weight is definitely a, a major issue. Obesity is linked with so many of our chronic diseases. And uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, our fat cells, or what we may call adipocytes, uh, these things don't just sit there uh, when they accumulate on your body. They don't just sit there and they're not dormant. They're actually metabolically active. And unfortunately for us human beings, these adipocytes, these fat cells, release what are called pro-inflammatory cytokines. Now that's a fancy word, but simply it means these proteins, these cytokines that promote inflammation in the body. And so obviously inflammation is not good. Inflammation is the basis or the foundational uh, pathological feature of most or, or many of our chronic diseases. And so you can see how having excess amount of these fat cells leads to excess amounts of these inflammation-promoting proteins, which then leads to inflammation. And this that creates a state of low-grade chronic inflammation, which then over years will eventually develop into many of our major chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, hypertension, various autoimmune diseases, uh, inflammation is linked with conditions even like Alzheimer's. Mm. So this is why obesity is an is a, is a issue. And scientifically, it's proven to be a major risk factor for so many chronic diseases. So for our listeners, excess weight is something that generally must be dealt with. Mm-hmm. It goes, uh, Daniel, it goes much more beyond just aesthetics. Yeah. I know a lot of people, they want to lose weight because of aesthetics. Mm-hmm. And that's important too. Yes, yeah. that is definitely important. For However, many people, yeah. uh, from a health perspective, I, I guess even aesthetics could be mentally helpful i'm not sure i guess you could say it that way but in just in terms of biology there's huge uh, health implications to having excess weight Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right i know uh, many people they they try to lose weight for different reasons one of them is of course the aesthetic uh, but like you're saying uh, there are metabolic consequences to excess weight which i think is really important to know because i think most of most of us when we think about you know, um, having too much fat in our bodies, we think of fat as like storage, right? It's energy storage, but this it's, is active energy storage metabolically. Yes, it's yeah. more than just energy storage. Right. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, um, so you know, many people they try to lose weight, they go on these programs, um, but they go through this thing called weight cycling. So they lose weight, they regain it. They lose weight, they regain it, and this is really quite common, isn't it? Yes, it's quite common. Uh, many patients have come to our clinic. Mm -hmm. Uh, retelling stories of how they tried this diet and that program and they lose weight quickly they do right but the common story that we hear is that they regain it they gain it back again and sometimes even more Mm -hmm. and this what we call yo-yo dieting yeah is um is very common and you know it's it's often it's best exemplified i think in uh programs like the biggest loser uh i'm not sure if it's still running i i heard that it is but uh, it's the uh, the biggest loser is a competition where they get a bunch of people, a group of people with excess weight, and they go through a very rigorous dietary and exercise program, mm-hmm. and they they lose weight very very quickly. Two individuals on that program was an individual named Danny Cahill. Uh, he started off at four hundred and thirty pounds, and he dropped to hundred and he dropped one hundred and twelve pounds, but then after uh, after a few years he gained. Uh, 104 pounds back mm. there's another lady i believe she was the first woman to win the uh, biggest loser contest she lost ho- 112 pounds in eight months uh, seven and a half months but uh, years later again she had regained much of that back so this is this is common so 
So why is that? Why does that happen? Yeah, I think、uh, we can get a glimpse of the answer to that question from studies. Scientific studies actually have come out,、uh, which is, seeks to explain some of some of the reasons why. And in fact, in the journal Obesity,、uh, in 2016, they released a study where scientists they actually got a group of individuals that were part of the Biggest Loser program,、mm-hmm. and they they assessed these individuals right before. Right after, and then they follow these people six years after the Biggest Loser to look at, you know, the changes, or or whether yeah whether there were changes、uh, during the, that period, and、uh, so this is what they found. So on average, the the average weight was three hundred twenty five pounds at the start, and it dropped to about one hundred ninety seven pounds、mm. uh, in seven point five months, so close to eight months. That's a huge drop. Yeah, that's that's huge. But six years later, so they track these people for six years after it cl- it climbed back up to two hundred ninety nine pounds, so almost three hundred pounds, right? So they dropped tons of weight, but they pretty much regained much of it, a vast proportion of it, right back.、Mm. In fact, five of the fourteen con-、uh, participants in the study, the people that they assessed. Regain within one percent of the baseline weight. Pretty much, they regain all the weight back,、mm-hmm. and one of them actually gained even more weight than what they had started with、mm-hmm. before the Biggest Loser program. Oh, like why? Why does that happen? Well, these scientists, when they assess these, when they did the study, they also、uh, they also assess something called resting metabolic rate, and. The RMR and the resting metabolic rate is、um, is how much your how much calories your body burns in a state of rest. And what they found was that the resting metabolic rate dropped after thirty weeks on the Biggest Loser.、Uh, so that would be normal because because with weight loss you lose or you, your resting metabolic rate drops. So that's not surprising. And with weight gain or with uh, uh, with increased muscle mass. These types of things, your resting metabolic rate will actually go up. So the fact that these people they drop the resting metabolic rate after the、uh, Biggest Loser program is is abs- is actually what would be expected. However, they they、uh, assess the resting metabolic rate after six years, and they found that it had dropped even further、uh, from、uh, where it left off after the after the Biggest Loser, despite the fact that these individuals actually gained tons of the weight. Mm. Back, so you would, you would expect that the resting metabolic rate would go up as the、right. weight goes up、right. after six years, but that's not the case. What happened was that the weight went up, but the resting metabolic rate dropped down. So how much did it drop by? Well, a- after the competition, it went down. So the resting metabolic rate went down by by about six hundred and ten calories, but six years later, it went down further to about seven hundred and four. Calories per day dropped seven hundred four calories per day. This means that the body burned about six hundred calories less at rest than it, it did before the Biggest Loser,、mm-hmm. and it was seven hundred four calories less six years after the Biggest Loser. So、uh, overall, the scientists they say that the resting metabolic rate was approximately five hundred calories less than that what they would expect based on the body composition changes and age of the subjects. Now this is very serious because for some people, five hundred to six hundred calories could represent a meal,、mm-hmm, right. right? Or at least a very good portion of a meal, right? Right. So, and usually or hopefully your body's metabolic rate can match the amount of calories you consume, right? But after the Biggest Loser, they were burning less calories at rest, up to a meal's worth less calories at rest. So you can imagine how the implications of that. When people go back on their normal diets, but they don't have the resting metabolic rate to match the calorie burning,、uh, to match the、uh, that that increase in、uh, in intake of food, right? So it's almost like your threshold for overeating metabolically has dropped. Right, right. It has dropped. It becomes easier to overeat.、Uh, to yes, overeat and to gain weight.、Mm. Yeah. So why does the metabolic rate drop like that and stay stay low? Yeah, that's that's an excellent question, and I think it will help our listeners to、uh, to understand that your body naturally wants to conserve energy. 
mm-hmm. which is something I think we should be grateful for, right? So when you lose weight quickly, your body, you can say, kind of goes into a panic mode, right? And so it will naturally slow down the metabolic rate. Okay, right. right? So to try to conserve energy, as much energy as possible, as it sees that you're losing your your energy storage and exactly, yeah, it's okay. like. Oh no! What's happening? How come we're losing all this energy? Cause we need to slow ourselves down. Okay. Right. Yeah. So the the metabolic processes, the the metabolic rate, it slows down. So it seems that the body's metabolic rate got so shocked by the tremendously rapid weight loss that it essentially didn't recover, mm. even six years after the Biggest Loser. Mm. And I think this is the crux of the matter. This is why. So many people, when they go on these extreme diets where they lose weight very, very rapidly, that it becomes so easy to uh, regain the weight back. So, what was the diet and activity levels during the Biggest Loser show? Yeah, the uh, it was very extreme. So, I believe the average calories was about close to nine hundred calories per day. Wow, that's very low. Uh, most people would probably average twelve hundred. 1500 calories some maybe even 2000 right? right at least above a thousand for sure right right, right. Uh, but this is below that and the exercise was some sometimes up to three hours per day wow and what kind of exercise do they usually do for three hours it's it's, it's pretty intense right yeah they had trainers that are with them they do cardio uh resistance training all sorts of activities uh-huh. but they're burning a good amount of calories yeah, I can't imagine exercising for three hours a day like that. I mean, we go, uh, I go to the gym and do some cardio for thirty minutes, and then work out, strength training for like another thirty. And you're pretty, you're pretty tired by the end of one hour. So this is three hours. That's a that's a lot of exercise. Yeah, this was a very uh, extreme program. Does not mimic real life at all. Yes, people have to realize these were these people were doing this show I, I believe pretty much full time it seems yes so uh, it doesn't mimic real life at all mm-hmm. so what would be the major takeaways or lessons from the experience of the biggest loser contestants uh, in terms of uh, weight loss yeah there's uh, there's a few very important lessons um, one of them is that extremely rapid weight loss is detrimental mm-hmm. and uh, and that plus an extreme diet and exercise program is a recipe for weight loss failure. Uh, so I think that is one of the major lessons that we can learn, that going on an extreme diet and extreme exercise program that leads to extremely rapid weight loss, this is not a formula for successful weight loss. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's not sustainable, too. I think this kind of underscores the importance of try to uh, like a lifestyle-based approach, try to achieve a... Is there a way to live... A lifestyle that promotes healthy weight management yeah i think that's exactly what we have to be aiming for to find a lifestyle not something that's so extreme mm-hmm. how quickly should we be losing weight a good weight loss would be about one to two pounds per week okay. seems to be a reasonable kind of uh, rate of weight loss uh, this might seem like a lot to many people but People, people have to realize that it's actually much slower than what most people would actually hope for. Right, right. right? So let's give, let's use some examples. You want to lose 10 pounds? Well, at the one to two pound uh, weight loss, that's about 2.5 months. Mm. 20 pounds, five months. Okay. 30 pounds, about seven and a half, eight, eight months. 100 pounds, you're looking at two years. Mm. All mm. right. So, but how many, how, how how often do you meet people who want to lose maybe 10 pounds, 20 pounds, and they want to do it in a few weeks, right? Right, right. Uh, so uh, it's not saying that uh, that we should purposely go slow, mm-hmm. but uh, we, when we look at safe weight loss, we look at it much slower than what people might be hoping for. So let's look at our two individuals. So Danny Cahill, the individual that we talked about who was part of the Biggest Loser program, he lost over 100 pounds in eight months. But at a conservative pace, it would, have take, it would have been two years to one year, or one year to two years of, uh, of weight loss. So he accomplished all that in just eight months. Mm. So he's much faster. And same with Allison, uh, the lady that we talked about at the beginning. She lost a lot of her weight in eight months, approximately eight months, which she could have conservatively done in... 12 and a half months. 
perhaps if, if their weight loss was a little bit slower, they might have not had that shock to their resting metabolic rate, which might have um, con contributed less to their weight regain afterwards. So you've been using the word extreme to describe uh, this approach, for instance, like in The Biggest Loser. So what, do you, uh, what, would you, what are some other ways that you would, con you would consider extreme? Yeah, um, so when I say extreme, basically what we're talking about here is this severe, persistent caloric and nutrient restriction. And on top of that, this untenable physical activity program, right? So what we mean is like eating only 500 calories per day for weeks on end, right? A great example of this is something like the HCG diet, mm -hmm. which is, uh, which is uh, something that many people go to, the HCG diet, the human chorionic gonadotropin diet. And that has periods of weeks of, t weeks of time where they actually eat only 500 calories per day. This is what we're talking about, uh, severe restriction in calories that is persistent over several weeks. So to me, that would, be, that would be something I would call, consider extreme and not a formula for weight loss success. Um, for physical activity, it'd be something like The Biggest Loser, hours upon hours of physical activity every single day. What normal working person can actually do that, except for if you're an athlete, right? So uh, doing something like that is also, I, I believe, is, would, be some, would be considered extreme. Yeah, and if you're going to exercise for that many uh, hours per day, something else in your life is going to give, right? So you work a full day, uh, assuming you work a full day, eight hours, say nine to five, then you, you know, if you work out for two, three hours a day, and then, you know, you, that takes away time from, you know, family, other leisure activities, it would really take a lot of dedication. You'd probably lose some balance in your life as well. Yes, that's absolutely correct. And in fact, in our next episode, we will probably talk about exercise, and I will show that from the science that we actually don't need that much exercise at mm, all. Mm. Um, the amount of exercise that we can do to contribute and help with our weight loss is actually much less than some of these extreme things. Uh, we'll talk about diet as well and show that you don't need to restrict your calories so, so severely in, in order to actually get weight loss. Uh, mm -hmm. There's actually more of a holistic lifestyle approach that we can take to promote a healthy weight. I think that's really important too, because if we, if you look at some of these uh, other kind of programs out there, they're also very expensive. So maybe they're not as extreme, but they're very expensive. Like you, you have to keep going to a doctor's visit every week you're, and you're paying for that, or you have to buy these like packaged products that are expensive. Um, and so that just doesn't seem very tenable and sustainable either. Yeah, um, it's not a lifestyle right? to have to buy these pre-made special packages of food and things like that. It's just not, it's not a lifestyle. So we have to ask ourselves a question. Is there a lifestyle that's not, that's not going to shock our body's uh, resting metabolic rate and that we can actually sustain mm -hmm. and that's livable? And I believe the answer is yes. Right, and I think that's that's what's great about lifestyle medicine. It's kind of focuses on how to change your your lifestyle, and empower you to change yourself so that you don't so you can live a lifestyle that's going to promote health and not have to keep going to a doctor, depend on products, um, and just live a really extreme life. That's correct. Right. Yeah. All right. So in our next episode, we'll be talking about a lifestyle medicine approach to um, weight loss. So we hope that you can join us for that. Uh, as always, we'd love to hear your thoughts or comments on this episode, so we hope that you leave us a review. Uh, and also, again, if you have friends or family who you think could benefit from lifestyle medicine, we encourage you to share this podcast with them. So you've been listening to the Lifestyles Medicine Podcast. Thank you so much for listening in. We hope you'll join us next time.